Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to, I believe, episode 5, if I'm not mistaken, of Java 101. In this episode, we are going to learn about the different kinds of loops, the for loop and the while and do while loop. Uh, in Java, uh, and I've seen a lot of people do this, let's say you wanted to execute the exact same thing 20 times, or an unlimited number of times. As far as doing it 20 times, you could just copy and paste those lines a ton, but that would be incredibly messy and inefficient. As far as doing something an unlimited number of times, I don't really know how you would go about doing it without using a loop. But today we're going to actually learn how to use loops, which are extremely useful for uh, doing things more than once. There are two different main types of loops. There is a for, there's the for loop and the while loop. Uh, the for loop will run a set number of times, um, and the while loop will only run, it will keep running until its condition is false, and that will make more sense later. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the for loop with the townspeople. I couldn't think of a great example for the for loop um, given our current code, but I'm sure that we're going to come back and use it later. So what we're going to do is, instead of just the townspeople say hi, we'll have five people, we'll have five different people say hi. Now eventually when we get into like arrays and stuff like that, we can make it a bit more interesting. But I'm going to go ahead and take out this line right here where it says the townspeople say hi, and we're going to replace it with a for loop that will print out someone says hi a couple times. Eventually we'll make that a bit nicer, but for now we're going to do a for loop. Uh, when you write a for loop, there are three parts. You're first going to write for, parenthesis. The first part is called the initialization, initialization excuse me, expression. Basically, this is where you initialize your variable. What we're going to do is we're going to create an integer that's going to be our counter for the loop. Let's say we want this to run five times. We're going to have a counter that runs the loop and adds one to that counter each time while the counter is less than five, and that'll make more sense later. First thing we're going to do is simply declare our counter, int i equals zero, semicolon. Now, you'll notice that I set i equal to zero instead of one. In Java, all indices start at zero, and basically what that means is the way that we would normally count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Java would count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's an important thing to know. We're starting i at zero. And we're going to say, so the first part, we're creating this counter. It's an integer called i, and we're setting it equal to zero. That's just like what we did up here with the int health is 10. We're making one called i, which is the generally used um, identifier, and we're just setting it equal to zero as our counter. The next part is going to be i is less than 4, semicolon, this is the continuation condition. Basically, as long as this is true, the loop is going to continue. So we start out with i being 0, and while i is less than 4, we're going to run the body of the loop. So that would execute 5 times. Finally, you have the update expression. We're going to do i++. Now what that means is we're just adding 1 to i. So put our um, curly braces right there. So basically what we're doing is we have a counter called i and it's equal to zero. While i is less than four, it's going to run through everything inside of the loop, then add one to i. So first we start out, i is zero, zero is less than four, it runs through, now i is one. One is less than four, it runs through, now i is two. 2 is less than 4, so it runs. Now i is 3. 3 is less than 4, it runs through. Now i is 4. 4 is not less than 4, so the loop is done, and we continue on with the code. So inside of the for loop, whatever you put here is going to be printed out multiple times, or however many times you run this. So if you wanted to do something multiple times, that's the easiest way to go about doing it. So we're going to do system.out.println um, someone says hi. So each time this runs, the body of the loop is someone says hi. So every time this runs, it will say someone says hi. So if I show you this, 
say, what is your name, Pogo? And let's say I want to talk to the townspeople. You'll see it actually ran uh, four times meant to make this less than five, or you could say less than or equal to four. So that was my bad. So just to show you one more time, let's go to three. So as you can see, it says someone says hi five times. And um, that could be, it's a little bit annoying to see that same message five times, but eventually we will make it um, look a lot, we'll make it a bit better. This is just a good example of writing a for loop. The next example is much more, it's infinitely more useful given the current code that we have written. Um, overall, I use for loops a lot in my coding, but I don't use uh, while loops as much. But right now, this while loop is going to help us out a lot. Now, the current major problem with our game is that you run it and it says, welcome to adventure. You choose what you want to do. After it does that, it just ends and the game, it, the game just ends and you can't do more than one thing. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put all of this code inside of a while loop and set it to run. So, we're going to go ahead and say, so we're going to take all of this code, actually, no, from here all the way to, after it says welcome to adventure, write this menu and we're going to um, cut that code. And when you write a while loop, you write while parenthesis, and then all you need, you write your continuation condition in here. So the for loop has three parts, this only has one part. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this a little bit, and we're going to say int input equals one. So we're declaring input outside of the loop, because we don't want to declare it um, inside of the loop. There's no reason to, and it might actually mess up the code. So we're going to say while input is not equal to zero, and then paste everything back in. So, we start input out as being 1. While it's not 0, um, you know, stuff will, it will happen. Because if it's 0, we want to quit. So we can actually write println 0 quit. So if you put 0, you quit. Now we got to change input. We got to remove that. You can't declare 2. Um, variables in the same scope with the same name. Just basically we declared input right here, so we're assigning it a new value, but we're not declaring it again. Now if we run this, it should work. And if I go ahead and say go to the store, it says um, you have max health, and what happened? Let's see. Okay. One thing that we need to change when I call return, that will stop the code, that will stop this method, which in turn will stop the entire code. So with a while loop, you want to change that to continue. So anytime you see the word return, you want to change it to continue. And what that will do is it will skip the rest of the loop and just start back up from the top. Even though it sounds like it would continue the loop, it actually just restarts the loop. So if we run it again, you'll see it says pogo. And I say go to the store, it says you've max health, and it takes me back to the menu. So I could say go to the forest, and it says you discovered treasure um, in the forest after a long day of hiking, and then it goes back here. So after the long day of hiking, it takes away one of my health. So if I say go to the store, it says you bought a health potion and restored some health, instead of saying you already have max health because it restored. So the game will now continue on forever until I enter zero. Now you will notice that it says invalid item, and the reason why it's doing that is because um, this while loop, it checks if the input is not equal to zero before it runs. So at first it's equal to one, so if I type in zero, then I, then it's, it's inside of the loop, so it's going to wait until it gets to the very bottom, and it prints out invalid item before um, going back. And I th and the easiest way, t the way that you want to fix this is you just want to say if input is equal to zero, um, continue, and then change this to an else if. And that should, because if the input's zero, let's try that, then it immediately, then it continue, it just goes, it goes back to the top of the loop where input is equal to zero. And... That is about it. I'll quickly show you a do-while loop, because that would actually be more appropriate 
for uh, this scenario. A while loop will check the condition before running, and then after it's done, it'll check the condition again, and then it'll continue running. Then it'll check the condition and continue running, and it'll keep going. The difference between a while loop and a do while loop is the do while loop will run one time before it checks. The reason why we want to do this is because right now we're setting input equal to 1, but we want to actually get their input first before we check it. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to say, is we're going to cut this out and we're going to replace it with do, then down here, space, and paste that in. And you can now remove the 1 from there. What we're doing is this do, so we have our int called input, this do will run, everything will occur in here, then it will check. Then it goes back to being regular while loop where it runs, and then it checks, and then it runs, and then it checks, and then it runs. Just the difference is the first time it runs, the while loop will check, but the do while loop will not check the first time it runs. And, you know, you're going to get the same result with this, but um, that's just a nice, di that's a difference that you want to note. And in this case, a do while loop would make a bit more sense. So that is all for this video. This was a very um, quick overview of loops. If you got a bit confused, let me know, but um, loops, especially the for loop, is going to be, is going to come up a ton in the future videos because loops are incredibly important. Uh, so if you don't quite understand it, let me know, but we will, of course, be practicing this a lot more. Um, it's not terribly complex, but it, I'm, I don't know if I went too fast through it, so make sure to let me know. And that's all for this video. Uh, we learned how to do the do while loop, the while loop, and the for loop. Uh, this streamlines your code so you don't need to paste the same line 20 times. You can have a loop that will run the same thing 20 times, and you condense it from 20 lines into 3 lines or something like that. As always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, please click the like button, and I will see you guys very soon with the next episode of Java 101. Bye, guys.